Everyone who acknowledges me before others, I will acknowledge before my heavenly Father. But whoever denies me before others, I will deny before my heavenly Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. can 
and thus destroy body and soul in Gehenna. That's Satan in hell. And Jesus says, fear that one. Fear him so much that you run from him and run to God. The ones caught up here, that one, he says, I will not and I cannot acknowledge you before God in heaven because you've taken yourself away from me and given yourself over to the evil one. What Jesus is saying is, it's more irrational to be afraid of physical death than spiritual death. To bring this all together, Jesus says to the apostles, nothing is concealed that will not be revealed, nor secret that will not be known. What does he mean by that? Well, Jesus hasn't revealed himself yet to them, or to the world. And he hasn't completed his mission yet. So he's saying, look, trust me, this will all come out as time goes on. But well, you've got to trust me now. And he says, hey, look, you know, birds are sold for a few points. And even though they're birds and they're worth a few points, well, even those birds, the Father in heaven knows everything about them. Think about you. You're not a bird that's worth a few points. You are people sons and daughters of God, that's our worth the blood of the only begotten Son of God. How much more valuable are you? Trust me. God's got this. Right now, you don't understand. But it will come out later because nothing hidden is left unrevealed. In our first week reading, we see a prophet who actually gets it. It's Jeremiah. And Jeremiah is a servant of God during a time when the people of God are especially wicked. And that's saying something because they're pretty wicked at times. But Jeremiah is thrown into the mix. So God's like, hey, Jeremiah, I want you to go and tell people they're doing everything wrong. Uh, yeah, they don't want to hear that. Who wants to hear when they're having a good time to stop? Not me. Hey, we're having a great time doing our own thing. Practicing idolatry, you know, whatever it is we're doing. It offends God. It, it feels good. We like it. So, yeah, Jeremiah comes and he's like, hey, look, it's all bad. Don't do it. It's easier to shut you up, Jeremiah, than to change our ways. So we're going to vilify you and not ourselves. And because Jeremiah is faithful to God, what happens? Well, we hear it. He says, there is terror on every side. My friends... They're now my enemies. And my enemies are watching, waiting, salivating over missteps that I might make. But in the face of that, Jeremiah says this, the Lord is with me. The Lord tests the just. The Lord doesn't want to test those who have already gone over to the evil one. He tests the just. My foes, he says, will stumble and fall. Not me. They will. He says, praise the Lord. For the Lord rescues the Lord. All of this, he says, in the midst of affliction. Because he knows that God will reveal his greatness and protect his servants. It's not like he says this after it's all over. He's 
said, yeah, my plight in serving the Lord is difficult. But he's going to come through for me. That is my faith. So I do the Lord's will. And when in his time he deems it so, I will be, re I will be relieved of this burden. So what does this mean for us? Well, we all know this all too well. It's kind of tough to be a disciple of Christ. It's difficult, especially in the climate of the world today. And because we serve our Lord in faith, we might lose friends, family, our comforts might be taken away from us. But like Jeremiah, we're called to have faith. Look, Lord, yeah, right here and now, it might be difficult. But I have faith that this is not the end of me. In fact, there is no end of me. I go to heaven, and I live eternally with you in peace. So, we are here today because we live in faith. There are many of us who are not here. <clears throat> many of us who haven't answered the call to faith. And prudently, some are not here because it might not be good for them, considering the virus. But there are also some of us who are not here because it's easier to stay home. Okay. We want to keep this in mind. Jesus says, God sees all. And that's not a bad thing. Sometimes we think about that like, oh, this creepy guy, God, he's, he's looking at me every time I mess up. He knows it. No, it's not like that. God doesn't like sin. So God's like, uh, uh, yeah, I choose not to look at that. What I want to look at is are all the good things that we are doing. Maybe we don't even know about. It doesn't matter how small or how large, he sees them all. He knows and says he grows the mind and knows the heart. Whatever we're doing in his name, he is grateful for. And it brings God great joy. It's especially important these days <clears throat> to give our Catholic Christian witness to the world, especially when it's difficult, and it's pretty hard right now. Through the church, we probe an appreciation of how much we are valued by God. That, in turn, will help us to carry on ahead until His design is revealed. And that's for all of us as brothers and sisters of God, but also individually. He has amazing plans for each and every one of us. All we have to do is do our best to stay on the path. And we might find that what is revealed to us is absolutely amazing. We celebrate a second holiday. But it's a good one. It's Father's Day today. And it's important, fathers, to understand how important you are. John Paul, St. John Paul the Great once said that one of the most defining moments in his life was when he saw his father kneeling before the Blessed Sacrament in prayer. And that was after his mother died, and it was just John Paul, Carol Wittia, and his brother. It stuck with him for the rest of his life. And it resonated with me because I remember one time when I was pretty young, my mom, and I was like five years old, I remember, my mom stayed
taking my sister and myself to Mass. And my dad, what she usually did was read the paper in his underwear on the porch, front porch. And my mom, just shy of being on her knees, said to my dad, please come to Mass with us. And he didn't that day, but the next Sunday, he did for the rest of his life. That is probably why I'm a priest right now. The witness to God, the witness to the love of my dad's wife, my mom, that is what inspired in me the desire to be a priest of Jesus Christ. Fathers, you never know who's watching. Did St. Joseph understand what he was getting into? No. But the plan of God was revealed as time went on. As he sought to do the will of God, it was revealed to him. And we would not have Jesus Christ if it wasn't for St. Joseph, for our fathers. So my prayer for all of your fathers today is that you will be the man, the fathers, and the husbands that God is calling you to be, that God has made you to be. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Praise the Lord.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal co covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
us pray. Renewed and nourished by the sacred body and precious blood of your Son, we ask your mercy, O Lord, that what we celebrate on this devotion may be our sure pledge of redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. With our extraordinary minister of the Blessed Sacrament, how about please come forward? Heavenly Father, we ask for the blessing upon your minister, keep her safe and always in your loving care and protection as she brings your son to those most in need. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Parents, you know what I'm going to say, but I mean it every time. Thank you for bringing your kids to the mess. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks.